our battery setup and our inverter, the electrical setup. So as you can see, he cut off the top. He used a piece um, and secured it with silicone here so that there's no um, potential leakage into the bottom compartment. And we're gonna use this as the bottom of the cabinet that contains our fridge or uh, sink, not our fridge. So we're starting with the kitchen. Um, I spent the whole day yesterday um, trying to figure out what we even want in here and how to build it with what we have. It's very difficult <laughs> when you're not a carpenter or any kind of builder and you it's completely custom. These are not dimensions that other people have used. We've got this corner um, shelf where that hole is here that we want to use as the laundry chute and kind of um, use the walls to store some utensils and put a microwave, a convection microwave on top. So we've got this space to work with right here for counter space, stove, and sink. And I have resealed up um, the hole that I cut out. Um, and I was a little bit worried about the uh, any water leaks because this is all of our important electrical equipment under here and there's gonna be a sink above this. Um, what I did is I added some shower liner here so um, to waterproof it and then put back the Reflectix insulation on top of that. And then I'm also being cautious not to have any weight on top of this cabinet. So there are a few brackets that are gonna be holding up the, uh, the kitchen uh, area in the back and then this kind of toe kick up front is gonna be holding up the front of the kitchen area. So we're, we're getting ready to install the cabinet now um, and we'll see how it all comes out. We ended up leaving the cabinet open like this as well as the L piece until we finished all of our plumbing and electrical. All right, so in building out our kitchen, we knew that part of our cabinetry was gonna be covering up the electrical. And the issue with that is I'm gonna to have to uh, be able to access that if we need to wire anything else in later or if I need to reset a circuit breaker. So we had to set up this L part of the cabinet to leave room for me to get back to what I need to. So the first thing we did is the bottom of this cabinet, we've actually turned into like a trap door. And so down here we have our, um, right now our circuit breakers. And then as well as the, the power coming in from the pass through from the cab and as well as the where the power comes in from our external battery compartment too. So that's the first thing is to make sure we had access to that. And then also we've got all of these uh, buses back here. Um, we're gonna have kind of a false panel as the back of the cabinet that I'll be able to take apart easily and, and get to all this stuff when I need to. I'm here today getting ready to install our undermount sink right here all set up. Um, what I've done so far, we have cut out the hole for both the faucet and the sink on this nice edge glued pine board, um, sanded, poly, lots of coats of that, so that's been happening. And then we positioned it, we positioned it in the truck, we got it all set up where we wanted it, and so I've traced the outline underneath the um, underneath the countertop from like looking like basically inside the countertop tracing the outside and where all of the brackets are because we need to have brackets that hold first the countertop to the rest of the counter and then we need to be having these brackets fit in around those um, the ones that will be holding the sink in place so I traced the outline of where where the countertop meets the edges of the counter and where the brackets are so that we know where those other sink brackets can go um, and I've also traced the lip of the sink so we're getting ready I'm gonna do some um, some pla dry placement of all of the the brackets and the screws and I'll just show you this sink came from um, a place that it didn't really it didn't send us an installation guide so we kind of figured this out so we've got all these brackets to put around the sink lip and it's just going to kind of hold the lip and and attach to the other side of the counter like that and then they sent us these little screws that are machine screws and what we found um, they're supposed to go into these anchors that were sent with it and we actually found that this is for granite so we had to go buy fine screws that would work for wood and we got these neat um, like 
multi-material, how many uses? I can't tell what it says, but there's like, it can go into anything. It can go into any material. They've got um, threads the whole way down, so that's really great, the pointy end. And the threads are farther apart and thinner, so the likelihood of it splitting the wood is a little bit less, and that's what we want. We don't want to be splitting the wood. So my challenge now is to kind of map out where these brackets are going to go and make sure that we're not putting any screws in still between the edge glued pieces. Edge glued board, if you're not familiar, it's just a bunch of like strips of wood that are all glued to edge to edge to make this long board kind of like a butcher block. This is a cheaper alternative. They just sell edge glued panels at Lowe's that you can get. What I've also got, um, in case those screws are too long, I've got a bunch of neoprene uh, bonded neoprene washers to put over the head so that it might not, we don't want it to go through and be showing up on the other side of our sink. And I've got, got my drill, got my rubbing alcohol for cleaning off the sink lip before I silicone it. Cause we're going to, after I do all this prep work, we're going to just do a little bead of silicone around the edge of the lip and then actually put in the screws. And I'm going to make sure that I'm not screwing through the countertop um, by taping off my drill bit. So I'm just taking a little bit of painter tape and taping off the drill bit at the depth that I should be pre-drilling. Um, pre-drilling isn't necessarily necessary for these screws, but we like to do it anyway just to be safe to, to make sure that our wood doesn't crack. So I'm just gonna take a piece of scrap wood now, test that, um, test out where all the brackets will go and be on our way. It's our moment of truth where I'm going to start installing the sink, pre-drilling, just nerve-wracking, don't want to split any boards, don't want to go through the board, got my painter's tape on my drill bit, Wish me luck. Yes, done. I'm gonna wipe away the silicone, all the excess that's kind of coming out. And then I think, uh, I don't know how long this takes to dry. I have to look at the directions. And I'm excited to get it put back into the truck and to have a sink and then we'll install the faucet and everything will be glorious, except that we don't have water yet, but the plumbing's coming in soon. Progress update on the kitchen countertops. So we've got the uh, undermount sink actually mounted and uh, firmly in place. Next we'll be putting in the faucet right there, which will be great. And then one of our favorite features is that this side of the kitchen actually flips over and so that this will be stood up eventually to, uh, to provide still that same amount of counter space, but also reveal the, uh, the stove top here that we'll cook with. And so uh, it's pretty exciting. Today we've also installed a flexible hose from the bottom of the sink that'll drain over and into this compartment into where we'll have our gray water tank. We've got the shelving bracket set up for it. And underneath is our water heater, so we will be running water into it from our fresh water tank and then it'll come back out heated and either back across to the shower or up into the compartment to the sink. Let's check out this mounting. We just put some cushion stuff underneath, put some metal brackets on either side of the hot water tank and on the back and the side at these awesome foam bumpers so that it won't be jostled around and can stay in its nice little spot. Ooh, it's a kitchen! It's for real. And you can cook things. Yeah, sure can. <laughs> 